This week at NASA. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Celebration when the Curiosity rover safely found the surface of Mars August 6, 2012, and celebration this week on Capitol Hill as NASA and members of Congress mark the one-year anniversary of the Martian landing and showcase the ways the rover is helping us get to know Mars. And I'm here to present a token of our esteem. During another event to celebrate Curiosity at the Eisenhower Executive Office Building, members of the Curiosity team presented White House officials with a replica of the plaque flown on the mission and signed by the president. Curiosity's landing ignited a new generation of excitement which grew even more when the rover found evidence that Mars could have sustained life in the past. NASA and the rest of Earth looks forward to future finds on Mars from Curiosity and other missions. At Wallops Flight Facility, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden and members of the NASA Advisory Council received a status report on two major launches scheduled from the facility in September. The Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, or LADEE, mission will launch September 6, followed by the demo flight of Orbital Sciences Corporation's Antares rocket and Cygnus cargo craft to the International Space Station in the September 14th through 19th timeframe. NASA has completed the first step toward a mission to find and capture a near-Earth asteroid, redirect it to a stable lunar orbit, and send humans to study it. In preparation for fiscal year 2014, NASA managers held a mission formulation review to examine internal studies on concepts and alternatives for each phase of that mission. The agency is also evaluating about 400-plus responses from industry, universities, and the public to a recent request for information, or RFI, put out by NASA for ideas on tackling the asteroid initiative. Managers plan to integrate the most highly rated ideas into the asteroid mission baseline concept to further develop in 2014. The asteroid mission is one step in NASA's strategy to send humans to Mars in the 2030s. So this is, this is Lucas' helmet. Aboard the International Space Station, Chris Cassidy pointed out where water entered crewmate Luca Parmitano's helmet during a July 16th spacewalk. With water, a mixture of water and air getting into this vent port, the water bubbles started to build up behind his, behind this white plastic. NASA is still trying to figure out where the water came from. Spacewalk specialists believe the problem is connected to the suit's portable life support system backpack. KSC's Vehicle Assembly Building turned 50 recently. Most space fans have seen pictures of a space shuttle being stacked inside the VAB, but this concept image is a possible glimpse into the future and what stacking of NASA's Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft will look like. While that plan comes together, Crane operators and technicians have been practicing lifting a full-size mock-up of Orion, so they'll be ready when it's time for the real thing in 2017. And a major milestone for building the SLS. Passing the Preliminary Design Review, or PDR, means the current design of NASA's next heavy lift launch vehicle meets system requirements with acceptable risk, cost, and schedule constraints. Final details of the review will be presented to Administrator Bolden for permission to move on from design phase to production. Meanwhile, Bolden named planetary geologist Ellen Stofan the agency's chief scientist. Stofan will be Bolden's principal advisor on the agency's science programs and science-related strategic planning and investments. Stofan begins her new role on August 25th. In the past two decades, many exoplanets have been observed passing in front of their parent stars, but not in X-ray vision until now. Thanks to the extraordinary alignment of planet HD 189733b and its parent star 63 light years from Earth, the Chandra X-ray Observatory was able to capture the first ever X-ray pictures of a planet eclipsing its sun. The planet, similar in size to Jupiter, is more than 30 times closer to its parent star than we are to our Sun. NASA's Commercial Crew Program is preparing to enter its final phase of agency certification efforts. A pre-solicitation conference was held at Kennedy Space Center to involve industry in the Draft Request for Proposal, or RFP, process. The conference aimed to provide a greater understanding for all parties before the official RFP is released this fall. 
The commercial crew transportation capability contract will include a commercial company completing at least one crewed flight test to the International Space Station. This is all part of the agency's work with U.S. companies to provide commercial space flights for NASA astronauts and others to low Earth orbit, including the space station. Astronaut Mike Hopkins, who's headed to the International Space Station on September 25th as part of Expedition 3738, gave kids at Johnson Space Center an idea what it's like to train like an astronaut. The Train Like an Astronaut program teaches students physical activities that are a lot like exercise as astronauts do in their actual workouts. High school students with NASA's Independent Verification and Validation Program, or IV&V, shared their summer experience working at the West Virginia facility during presentations at NASA headquarters. Established as a result of the Challenger accident, IVNV focuses on agency safety and mission assurance. We think we have a good program and hopefully you can say that there is something that you're going to take either back to high school or on to college or wherever you're going. For the past 20 years, the IVNV program has helped expose interns to STEM careers at NASA. Also at headquarters, NASA's DEVELOP program held an end of summer open house to show off presentations and examples of work by students and young professionals in the program. DEVELOP lets participants use NASA Earth observations to address community concerns and public policy issues. For more information on NASA's DEVELOP program, visit http develop.larc.nasa.gov. And August 5th is the date the late, great Neil Armstrong was born 83 years ago in Wapakoneta, Ohio. The famed test pilot and NASA astronaut became the first person to walk on the moon in July 1969 during the Apollo 11 mission. We lost Neil last August, but what he did and the person he was continues to inspire and set the standard for those who follow him. No one, no one, but no one could have accepted the responsibility of his remarkable accomplishment with more dignity and more grace than Neil Armstrong. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories or to follow us on Facebook, iTunes, and other social media, log on to www.nasa.gov.